Hi, this is Matt Rosu, Dean of the Sigmund Weiss School of Business at Susquehanna University. This is a supplement to the online game theory class. Uh, some optional homework assignments were given out, and we're just going to go through the answers to the two questions in this short video. So the first question was find the Nash equilibrium or multiple Nash equilibria in this two-player game. So this game, uh, you have two players. And each of them can choose a strategy of going to venue one or a strategy of going to venue two. You'll notice that if they go to different venues, they get a payoff of zero. So you imagine that these two people are our friends, right? Uh, if they go to, if player one goes to venue two and player two goes to venue one, at that outcome, both, both payoffs are zero. If player one goes to venue one and player two goes to venue two, both payoffs are zero. If they both end up at the same venue, uh, both of the payoffs are positive. So find the Nash equilibrium or multiple Nash equilibria of this game. Uh, so at what outcomes would nobody have an incentive to change given the other player's choice? In this game, there are two Nash equilibria, right? And it's, it's either of the outcomes where both players go to the same venue. So if they both go to venue, let's start if they both go to venue two, because that one seems a little more obvious, right? They each get a payoff of three, and naturally neither of them would want to switch because they'd be going from a payoff of three to a payoff of zero. So that is a Nash equilibrium. What I suspect a number of people who first went through this might have thought that was the Nash equilibrium. Both of them going to venue one is also a Nash equilibrium. So both going to venue one, neither of them actually has an incentive to change their choice given what the other person is doing. So it is a stable point. So there are two Nash equilibria in this game, both to venue two and both to venue one. Now, I think a question that many people could quite reasonably ask is why in the world would they want to end up at venue one? Because the payoffs are only one each when the payoffs at venue two are three each. And that, that's a fair question. But it doesn't change the fact that venue one is, is in equilibrium. If they happen to find themselves there, it's stable. Neither would want to change their choice unilaterally going from venue one to venue two. So it is, uh, this is a game with two Nash equilibria, venue one, both going to venue one or both going to venue two. The second game, uh, it's adapted from uh, the textbook from McCain. Uh, it's a game theory textbook I think is fantastic for undergraduates. Uh, I took the question and adapted it just a little bit. So two sisters, uh, Iris and Julia, are students at nearby college. All the classes are graded on a curve. They're the two best students in the class and uh, each will top the curve unless they enroll in the same class. So both of them have to choose one final class for the semester, and they're each choosing between math and lit. Both good at math. Iris is better at literature. Uh, each wants to maximize her grade point average, and the GPAs are shown in this table. So what are the strategies for this game? Okay, the strategies for the game, uh, for Juliet's choose math or choose lit, and for Iris, it's choose math or choose lit. Those are the strategies for the game. What outcome would you expect, or what is the Nash equilibrium of this game? Well, let's just look at each outcome and try to determine at any outcome, would players switch their choices? Okay, well, they're both getting a 4.0, right? Where Julia chooses math and Iris chooses lit. Of course, neither has an incentive to change. If Julia switches from math to lit, she goes from a 4.0 to a 3.7. She would not want to do that. If Iris were to change from math uh, from lit to math, she goes from a 4.0 to a 3.8. She would not want to do that. So we know uh, Julia choosing math, Iris choosing lit, is a Nash equilibrium. What about the other outcomes? Well, if they both choose lit, Julia could do better by switching to math, right? A 4.0 is better than a 3.7. So that both choosing lit is not a Nash equilibrium. What about both choosing math? If they both choose math, Julia gets a 3.7. She could have gotten a 3.8 if she decides to switch to lit. So this isn't a Nash equilibrium, right? Somebody wants to change their choice. And actually for Iris, could go from a 3.8 to a 4.0 by changing if they both had math as well. So you only need one player to want to change his or her choice to make it not a Nash equilibrium. Here we actually have both. 
If Julia chooses lit and Iris chooses math, this is actually also a Nash equilibrium. Notice Julia will not want to change from getting a 3.8 to a 3.7. And Iris is getting a 4.0 either way, so it doesn't have an incentive to switch. So in this game, we actually have two Nash equilibria, where Julia chooses lit and Iris chooses math, or when Julia chooses math and Iris chooses lit. Now there's a wrinkle thrown in. Suppose that Iris doesn't really care about her GPA. She just wants to maximize the difference between her GPA and her sister's, right? Like she wants to do better than her sister and make it the biggest difference possible. Well, it says to rewrite the payoff matrix. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Okay, I'm gonna write this out in Excel to just kind of match what we have going on in our original problem. So we have Julia and Iris can choose between math and lit, can choose between math and lit. And in the problem, note, um, Iris's payoffs have changed, Julia's haven't. So Julia's the exact same thing. So we've got 3.7 and then something for Iris. For literature, it's 4.0. Um, 4.0. Julia's payoff if she chooses lit and Iris chooses math is 3.8. And Julia's payoff if she chooses lit and Iris chooses lit is 3.7. So now we need to figure fill in what Iris's GP, what Iris's payoff is, I'm sorry. So Iris's payoff is no longer the GPA. It's the difference between her GPA and Julia's GPA. Okay, so 3.8 versus 3.7, that's 0 0.1. For if Iris chooses math and Julia chooses lit, uh, 4.0 minus 3.8, that's 0 0.2 difference. If they both choose lit, 4.0 and 4.0, so that's a 0.0, .0 difference. And if Iris chooses lit and Julia chooses lit, so it's a 0 0.3 difference. Okay, so this is our revised payoff matrix. I'm going to expand this a little bit. Now, what would be the Nash equilibrium in this revised game? Well, let's take a look at each of the possible outcomes. Um, Julia choosing math and Iris choosing lit. Well, this is Iris's lowest payoff of 0, 0.0. She would not be happy here. She would want to switch from lit to math, right? Because she wants to show up her sister and do better than her. So this would not be a Nash equilibrium. I'm going to mark that with red. Um, where Julia chooses math and Iris chooses lit, uh, Iris would not want to change, but Julia is getting a 3.7 and could get a 3.8 if she switched to lit, so Julia will not want that particular outcome. Julia choosing lit and Iris choosing math. Okay, so Julia is getting a 3.8. She will not want to change to get a 3.7. Uh, Iris is getting a 0.2 but could get a 0 0.3 by switching over to literature. So that's not a Nash equilibrium. And what about the final outcome? Julia choosing lit and Iris choosing lit. Well, Julia's only getting a 3.7. She'd want to switch. Iris is thrilled because it's getting the highest payout. That's not a Nash equilibrium either. So we actually end up in a game if Julia wants to maximize her GPA, but Iris wants to maximize the difference between her GPA and Julia's GPA. There is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium of this particular game, right? At any of the outcomes, one or both of the sisters won to change their choice. Now, this is the type of game, a little bit later in the class, where we could solve for what's called a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, that the optimal strategy would be to choose math some percent of the time and lit some percent of the time. But if it's only done once, then what you might do is you might, um, if you really want to make sure you are um, playing optimally, perhaps you're 
flipping a coin or if you know do, doing a random draw to say I'm going to choose this some percent of the time. So it's no pure strategy Nash equilibrium. At any outcome, one of them wants to switch, right? Julia would want to switch 3.7 down to 3.8. Iris is getting a 0.2 payoff, would want to switch over to here to get a 0.3 payoff. Here, Julie is getting a 3.7 and would want to change her choice to math to get a 4.0. But now Iris is only getting a 0.0, .0 payoff and could get a 0.1 payoff by switching over to math. Uh, it's, it's, so it's a kind of a fascinating game. When somebody's payoff changes, it can change the outcomes of the game. And we, we see a pretty clear illustration of that here. Uh, thanks. Once again, my name is Matt Rosu, Dean of the Sigma Y School of Business at Susquehanna University. And I hope you found uh, this short video helpful.